Good evening and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. And we're here tonight for several reasons. The first and uh, probably most important of which is recognizing the domestic violence response team and declaring October 2017 to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Woodbridge Township. And please allow me to read the proclamation. Whereas domestic violence touches the lives of Woodbridge Township residents and leaves a devastating impact on women and children of every background and circumstance. And whereas Woodbridge has established a domestic violence response team under the auspice of the Woodbridge Township Police Department with the mission to break the cycle of violence and to provide the best possible support and assistance to victims of domestic violence, regardless of race, religion, or gender. And whereas the DVRT is dedicated to assisting the victims of domestic violence through crisis intervention, community education and outreach, and by providing emergency support, counseling and professional referrals and services 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to victims and families of domestic violence. And whereas the DVRT stands as a nonprofit 501c3 volunteer organization, solely dependent on fundraising activities with 100% of donations dedicated to assisting victims, purchasing and or producing educational materials, presentations, and handouts for victims, and training and continuing education for DVRT members. Until this year when we supplemented everything with a township contribution, which I'll get into. Now, therefore, I, John E. McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge, in concert with the Woodbridge Township Council, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2017 to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month throughout Woodbridge Township, and do encourage all Woodbridge Township residents to step up and support the mission of the Domestic Violence Response Team. So, I started thinking not too long ago how, I, I think it was at a, a pan pancake breakfast at the Avenel uh, St. Andrews or something, where you know, all the effort, and what are you making a pancake breakfast? 500 to 1,000, if you're lucky, right? So I started thinking, you know, then these people in this organization have event after event after event, and they always try to make, up, make money in literally in hundreds of dollar increments. Uh, there's no big $10,000 fundraiser. There's nothing major. Um, they do it a little bit at a time. So I asked... What exactly is your budget? And they showed me the financial statements, and roughly they go through about $25,000 a year. And I said to myself, you know, I've been mayor here 10 years, and I've watched them do all this work to make the money. And then I realized they're working on our behalf as the township. They're not working on their own. They're doing everything in coordination with us and the police department, and they're representing us, and they're doing great things for us as a Woodbridge Township government. So why the heck are we making them raise money three or four or five hundred dollars at a time at a spaghetti dinner or a pancake breakfast or all the different things that they do? So we, when working with the town, uh, town council and particularly Councilwoman Debbie Meehan, we decided that we would make a, an annual, which I promise it will be annual as long as I'm here, um, which will hopefully be a long time. Uh, we will make a, uh, an annual $25,000 contribution to the domestic violence response team. I don't know if we have the check ready now, but... You didn't know that? Who said, oh my God? I did. Oh, you didn't know that? <laughs> yeah, we did it a while ago. It just makes sense. Like, why the heck are you out there, like, struggling for a couple hundred bucks at a pop to, to work for us? It just doesn't make sense. Now, if you want to have your events, great. You want to be at the street fair, you should be out there with your purple shirts encouraging people to talk to you. Great, but you can do it without worrying about the pressure. I mean, you're doing education for us. You're doing outreach for us. So I, I find, sorry it took me 10 years to realize this, <laughs> but I guess better late than never because all of a sudden I said to Bob, I said, okay, Police Director Hubner and Joe, I said, uh, why, why are we not giving them money? To, why are they doing all this? And they agreed. So I'd be happy to call, I'd like to call up now whoever wants to come up. Uh, Kathy, I guess, you want to accept the proclamation? <clears throat> Uh, Kathy and I have a special long-term relationship. She's a Menlo Park Terrace girl. Uh, I'm a Menlo Park Terrace kid. So is Joe Niski, a Terrace kid. Uh, us Terrace kids stick together, those of us that got out alive. Um, but Kathy, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Kathy because she is actually moving uh, shortly. Let me tell you here, I'm going to dedicate this proclamation this, this year to Kathy. Kathy McGrath, Kathy Sullivan McGrath, uh, completed her 40-hour training course and became a member of the Woodbridge Township DVRT in the fall of 2000. That's do the math, that's 17 years of dedicated service. She immediately jumped in and became an integral part of our team. 
Her dedication to helping those affected by domestic violence is evident in her steadfast commitment to the team for the past 17 years. She has served on the executive board first as treasurer, then as coordinator for the last five years. In addition to her duties and responsibilities as an executive board member, Kathy has been involved in every facet of our services to victims, community outreach, and fundraising. For the past nine years, she has spearheaded the administration of our 40-hour training program, as well as teaching classes and mentoring new members. For 10 years, Kathy was a principal committee member of the team's main fundraising awareness event, our annual Step Up Walk to End Domestic Violence. She was also an integral part of all of our fundraisers and community events, such as the St. James Street Fair, our twice yearly breakfast and bake sale, our annual Community of Lights along Main Street and the Baron Arts Center, just to name a few. Kathy has consistently demonstrated her commitment to the team, her community, and the families affected by domestic violence. She is an invaluable asset to the Woodbridge Township Domestic Violence Response Team. We are truly fortunate and grateful for hard work, her hard work and dedication. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not an easy group to be a volunteer in. You don't just show up and go to meetings. You have to take 40 hours of training. You have to take continuing education training. You've got to be really dedicated to the cause. You've got to be on call and sit home when it's your turn to be there uh, in case a call comes in so somebody gets the help right away. This is perhaps the most um, um, difficult uh, volunteer group to be a member of because of the requirements to get on the team and the requirements to stay on the team. This is a very serious group of dedicated individuals. Uh, I can't thank Kathy enough for her uh, service. I knew her like, my whole life, but back in 2000 when I was working for the town, we met up again. Uh, and then, of course, I became mayor, and I, they have my complete and total support, as they do Bob and Joe and the officers of the, uh, see Officer Lee here from the PD, uh, have our complete and total support. But this group has really benefited by having Kathy McGrath uh, in it and leading it for the past several years. And I can't tell her how much we appreciate what she's done to Woodbridge Township. You know, you're moving away. Is nothing sacred anywhere? anywhere, oh, you, anywhere? Oh, that, we don't know that? <laughs> you do? <laughs> we didn't know you didn't know that? Know you knew. I didn't know. They just told me 10 minutes ago. Okay. So I, I was uh, going to come call all of you together. Oh, is that why you wanted to see me? Yes. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> Oh, at least I didn't blow your secret. No, no, no. Oh, my oh, no, oh. No. Yeah, I, I kind of. No, kinda... the team knows. They found oh, good. out at the meeting. Yeah. I just thought you the way you said that. Yes. I thought I blew the secret. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I. You don't have to worry about surprising me. <laughs> no, I'm sad by it. I don't. I mean, I'm very so sad by it. So am I. But I'm sure you'll be around, and I'm sure you're not going to just, you know, go away and never come back. I'm sure you'll come back for a street fair or something, or some walk or something, and say hello to the gang. Yeah. No, business is going to bring me back to the area and Woodbridge, and you know, I have family here so oh yeah where are you going uh, Virginia Virginia okay yeah. and my brother lives there say hello I will <laughs> see that I'm gonna I'm gonna meet up with another McCormick yeah. <laughs> true true well anyway you know what I think about you and John, how great you are you so, so much. you're the best you're the best I hate to ask you this now but uh, do you want to say a few words sure <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'll say a few words. Just a few. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Director <laughs> of Nariniski, I'd like, on the behalf of the Domestic Violence Response Team, I would like to thank you all for this proclamation. I have been doing this, as John said, for 17 years, and I have always said that my proudest moments are with the Domestic Violence Response Team and working with our victims. We do whatever we can, wherever we can, however we can, to help a victim and their families. Domestic violence is not going away, and we need to keep getting the word out. We need to keep providing community awareness and community education. We need to keep looking for more team members. You know, as you can see, some of our members are getting a little bit older, and, you know, things are moving. Not, not me. I'm not, I, you know. I'm, I'm not saying, <laughs> but we, we always need new members and, you know, you can find the information on our website, which is Woodbridge, Woodbridge Township, D, what is it, Woodbridge DVRT.org, I apologize, and uh, also on the Township's website, you can find it as well. I appreciate everything Woodbridge Township does and for all the support that you give us. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kat. But something, something that's worth mentioning is that when you look at crime statistics, now our statistics overall are, 
are down. We're better than towns around us. We're okay. Any crime is bad. Don't get me wrong. But, but we're better than most and, and better than in the past. But the one thing we lead the county in per capita is domestic violence response team incidents. It's not because we have more incidents per capita than anybody in the county or anybody in the state. It's because we have the domestic violence response team that is so active and so visible and so um, available that people feel comfortable reporting incidents to us. So our 102,000 people in the next town's 10,000, the next town's 200,000 on a per capita basis, I guarantee you we don't have any more uh, actual cases, but it's impossible to measure what actual cases there are if there isn't a reporting of them. And because we're so good at it, and these ladies and gentlemen are so good at it, it is easy for people in Woodbridge to come and, and talk to us about it, and then the case, of course, gets reported, and it looks like we have more than normal. We do not have more than normal. We're just so good. These people in the purple uh, that go out there and do their walks and their breakfasts and their street fairs and all these things that you heard, they're so good that people feel so comfortable coming in to talk to them. And if other towns had anybody as good as these people, we'd all be even. So we look like we're higher, but I can assure you we're not higher. It's because of this group here. And that, that, that bears mentioning. Director Hubney would like to say a few words? Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Kathy, first of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, the job you guys do is invaluable. Um, what you do for the victims of domestic violence, um, can't say enough about. You come in uh, on your own time, late at night, any hour of the day or night, uh, and you aid these people who are in need. Uh, so uh, you're to be applauded. Um, you are the model, not only in the county, but throughout the state. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I mentioned Officer Lee, Francis Lee, and also we just joined by Officer Cindy Chavez. Detective. The, detective, sorry. Sorry, oh, excuse me. Um, these two are the officers, the liaisons between the domestic violence response team and the police department. They do an awesome job. I always see Cindy uh, coming and going in the uh, parking deck. We always talk about the group and all the great things that you do. So congratulations and thanks to both of you. Okay, now if I could call up uh, for a special proclamation, Rafael Torres and Anthony Santiago. How are you? Which one are you? Anthony. You're Anthony? You're Raphael? Nice to meet you. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much. If I could read this proclamation now. Okay. Whereas on Saturday, September 9th, 2017, Rafael Torres, and there's also one for Anthony Santiago, uh, a resident, Ant Rafael's a resident of the Island section of Woodbridge, and Anthony is a resident of the city of Newark. So it's got one for each. Um, observed an individual break an individual break into and ransack a commercial vehicle on Forest Street and without hesitation or concern for personal safety confronted and restrained the individual until the Woodbridge Police Department responded to the scene and whereas responding PD officers took custody of the suspect and upon further investigation determined that there was probable cause to arrest the suspect on charges of burglary and theft from a motor vehicle Further investigation determined that the suspect was in possession of stolen property from other motor vehicles and was connected to a burglary of an office building located on Route 27 in Island. Whereas the actions of Rafael Torres and Anthony Santiago allowed the Woodbridge Police Department to apprehend a suspect in connection with the burglary of a commercial build, building and multiple vehicles and which served to prevent further criminal activity in the Island section of town. And whereas Rafael Torres and Anthony Santiago are recognized for their public safety actions and willingness to get involved, which resulted in the arrest of a criminal suspect and prevented further criminal activity. Now, therefore, I, Johnny McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge, in concert with the Woodbridge Township Council and the Woodbridge Police Department, do hereby honor and salute Rafael Torres and Anthony Santiago for their public safety actions and do extend best wishes and safe passage in all future endeavors. Gentlemen, uh, this is an amazing thing. You know, we always tell people, see something, say something, help out, do whatever you can to help the police officers. And you went a little bit above and beyond that. Right. You went a lot of bit above and beyond that. Let me uh, present you with these proclamations. Right. Thank and, you. Um, and do you want to uh, say a few words? No, it's okay. Thank Come you. on. How about you? Anybody <laughs> know? You want to know who's with you? Uh, my, my two sons. <laughs> And my oldest stepson right there. Two sons and stepsons? Yes. Your dad's, a, your dad's a public safety hero. Yes. You know? All right. <laughs> Not the guy tie at all. 
I mean, Bob, you want to say something? Yeah, Director absolutely. Hopner? Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you very much. All right, you are. Thank you. Um, I like, we don't usually recommend that, to get that involved, but they did, and we thank you for it. As the mayor said, reading the proclamations, this was an individual not only broke into the one vehicle, broke into several vehicles, and broke into a business. And what we found is when somebody's out there breaking into motor vehicles, they don't do just one. So you stop several crimes, and we appreciate your help. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thanks again, John. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. And today we have a very special proclamation to be given to a very special citizen of Woodbridge Township by the Colonia Elks Lodge 2282 for their 2017 Citizen of the Year. So I will ask Bonnie Uriarty, uh, representing the Elks, to please make this presentation. Thank you. Uh, you can say what you got to say. I'll, I'll read that later. Okay. Well, then here, you hold I'll this hold one. this. Okay. Okay. I um, had the honor last year of nominating one of my really good friends, um, Councilman Corey Speller, to be our Citizen of the Year. It's actually 2016 to 2017. Um, on March 19th of this year, he couldn't be here um, to accept it, so I was able to accept the award for him. Um, we have our Dist Distinguished Citizenship Award um, from the Grand Lodge of Elks, um, which is a national organization, and also a certificate from the Central District, which uh, Colonia is a part of. And they both go to Corey, um, as well as proclamation from the mayor and the township um, for him as well. And I would love to present this to you. And the, uh, the beautiful thing is that Corey knew he couldn't make it, and he knew he was getting the award, but then he figured that he didn't make it, so they gave the award to somebody else. Yeah. So until he got here tonight, he didn't know he was getting this award. Let, let me just read um, some of the um, things on the proclamation that we got from the Elks. Whereas Colonial Elks Lodge 2282 and the Elks District Americanism Committee for Community Involvement and Service has nominated Corey Spiller, Councilman Ward 3, and lifelong resident of the Avenel section of Woodbridge Township as a 2017 Elks Citizen of the Year. Whereas Councilman Corey Spiller has served the Woodbridge Township Avenel Colony Port Reading community as fire official with the Avenel Fire Prevention Bureau and as a life member, past president, and ex-chief of the Avenel Fire Company, former vice chairman of the Woodbridge Township Zoning Board, past officer and member of the Avenel Knights of Columbus, and as an auxiliary officer of the Avenel VFW Post 7164. And whereas Corey is honored before the leadership and members of the Elks Lodge and Elks District Committee, and fellow council persons, community, family, and friends as the Elk Citizen of the Year. Now, therefore, I'm Johnny McCormick. Dear, uh, hereby extend highest congratulations and honor to Councilman Corey Spiller upon his nomination and wish him best wishes and future success in all endeavors. So, ladies and gentlemen, we spend every Tuesday here and who knows nights and weekends where we are always giving out awards. Um, it's, it's nice for someone who spends all the time doing that to get recognized, not for just being a councilman, but for all the other things he does for the community, you heard at the Elks, the Knights, the VFW, the uh, fire company, everything. He's there all the time. He's got three kids right now. They're in three different schools. So him and his wife bounce around all over the place between Colonial High School, Avenel Middle School, and School 4 and 5. You know how much it takes to be a councilman in a town as active as Woodbridge. Uh, it's not an easy job. Just in and of itself, he would deserve it just for being a, a, great, a great councilman. But the Elks uh, was very sensible in selecting their Citizen of the Year. So congratulations to that, Bonnie. And Corey, do you want to say a few words? Thank you, sir. You got me. Ah. <laughs> you got me. Um, I would want to thank the, the Elks and Bonnie, the exalted ruler. Um, it was just unbelievable. Um, an award to receive the Citizen of the Year. My mother-in-law, we had a, the day of, we had her 78th birthday. Um, so when you get, that's still young, but you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure you make as much as you can. I felt really bad that I couldn't attend, but um, yeah, you, you got me pretty good on this one. Um, I, once again, thank you. I wanna thank um, my fellow council members, the administration, the mayor. Um, this is, a, I, don't, I don't, don't take this lightly. This is what, a, quite an accomplishment. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, Bob. <laughs> council President Rick Delaney, would you like to say a few words on behalf of the council? 
Absolutely. You know, um, it's not too often that a council member gets honored with anything. It's usually us going out, as the mayor said, to uh, functions, whether it's an Eagle Scout or a Chief's Banquet, uh, where we're actually up oh, fire. No. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, where. You know, and we don't look to receive anything. And I know Corey's very humble receiving this because that's not what we're about. We're about helping the community and do what we can. And to have one of our own colleagues, well deserved, to receive this honor is it's nice to be here to share this with you. Uh, and you do a good job and definitely dignified on getting this uh, honor and award. So congratulations on, on behalf of the council. Picklinders, the rest of the council. Councilwoman Debbie Meehan, Fifth Ward. Councilman Brian Small is at large. Councilwoman Lizbeth De Jesus is at large. And Councilman Vero Patel is the Fourth Ward. So they're all here tonight for the council meeting. So we got you on a good night. And I'm so glad we surprised you because we can't do that often. Thank you very much. Notice the requirements of the open public meeting law have been satisfied concerning this meeting. The Homeowners Tribune and the Star Ledger published the annual notice on December 16th. 2016, a copy of the schedule is posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board and it should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. Councilman Anderson, Councilman Fakara, Councilwoman Drum, Councilwoman De Jesus, Councilman Spiller, Here. Councilman Small, Here. Councilman Patel, Here. Vice President Mann, Here. and President Delina. Here. I get a motion to approve the minutes from September 5th and September 19th. Motion. Motion properly second. Any comments or questions from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Beginning with second reading ordinances tonight, I'm going to start with consent for letters A, B, C, and D. Amendments to Chapter 7. The first is to add handicap parking. Uh, uh, correction, it's to delete handicap parking on Hudson Street in the Menlo Park Terrace section. We also have handicap parking to add to Sierra Court in Woodbridge. We have a change at the Yield intersection, New Dover Road, and Chain of Hills Road, and also additional handicap parking for. Uh, governmental properties uh, owned by the township and the Board of Education. And I get a motion that A, B, C, and D be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be open. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D only. Hearing no comment from the public, and I get a motion that these ordinances be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We will take E and F by consent. Both of them are ordinances adopting redevelopment plans. The first is for the Red Oak Manor redevelopment plan. The second is the Downtown Woodbridge Area 1 redevelopment plan. And I get a motion that both of these ordinances be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be open. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. The public hearing is now open on E and F. E and F only. Uh, you Council President, you are for On E, the ordinance adopting the Red Oak Manor uh, redevelopment plan, where is that situated and what are we replacing with that? That would be the senior uh, building over on Olson on Rollway Avenue over into Port Reading. Okay, that's relatively new building or? It will be new construction. I mean, the building that we have there, how old is that building? I have no idea. Okay. Um, will the uh, Woodbridge Housing Authority be, um, how can I remember, will, it, will they be running that new construction? Will they be running that new building or will we be turning that over to a private enterprise? No, it'll still be senior under that, that senior housing. Okay, so it's like the Woodbridge Township will be running the correct thing on here. Okay, okay, thank you. Any other comments and questions on letters E and F? There are no other comment. Can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed, the ordinance be adopted, and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law? Motion. Second. Motion made properly. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We will take letters G and H by consent, both bond ordinances. The first is with regards to the Woodbridge Housing Authority property in the amount of $7.2 million. The second also regarding the Woodbridge Housing Authority in the amount of $6.5 million. And I get a motion that the public hearing on these two ordinances be open. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Letters G and H open for second reading public hearing. G 
G&H only. What exactly this money will be used for? What projects, what uh, mayor? It's basically going to be used to refinance the housing authority debt and to provide some funding for additional projects. From the board. No additional projects. Uh, we talked about the uh, replacement of the for the housing the single housing and uh Rose Street. Uh, on what street? The Rose Street, Rose Street in Woodbridge. The Red Oak project's being built in Port Reading. It's all tied into the housing authority debt. The housing authority is incurring new debt and they're refinancing old debt through us. We're essentially going to be their bank so they can get lower interest rates. Okay. Okay. This won't cost the taxpayers anything. Everything we spend, we're going to get back in rent payments. Now, a question that I have on the Rose Street Singles building. Uh, it's going to be right. Are you talking about Rolling Avenue? I mean, Rolling Avenue. No, no, I'm talking about over here on the Woodbridge, behind the post office. I believe he's talking about Stern Towers. Stern Towers. Stern Towers. Stern Towers. That building is going to be developed by private developer, right? But it could be. That's the plan. Okay. Now, if private individual buys it, don't they have to contribute the money, pay for it before they? We're going to sell. We're going to sell. Somebody else going to sell it. Uh, money from there. Can't they use that money to build the city of Belmont in Reading? They're paying for Stern and Tower. Right. So how can they use that money to pay for Red Oak? Well, I'm talking about the, where the money is going to go for the Stern Towers. Where's the money going to go? Yeah. The housing authority is going to get paid for their land and for the building. The building is going to be demolished. Right, and then what do, we, what do we do with the money? You have to ask the housing authority. Well, you are the housing authority. No, we're not. Well, you are giving the $7.2 million, so you, you, you finance the You're asking project. completely separate questions. Well, I'm talking about that. It's, we replace them one with the other, but they have no money to build a new one. The and whole package is being go. financed through the town. The town, the housing authority is going to pay for Red Oak, and they're going to refinance their existing debt and they're doing all that through us. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments on letters G and H only? Is there no other comments? Any motion that the public here be closed to be adopted? Submit to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Letter I, an ordinance authorizing the conveyance of a portion of property currently known as 290 Old Road in the Port Reading section. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be open? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter I, letter I only. Hearing no comment, can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed, the ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law? Motion. Second. Questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. Letter J, ordinance authorizing the subdivision of property also in the Port Reading section for the Port Reading Senior Center. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second or third reading and the public hearing be open? Motion. Second. Questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter J, letter J only. Hearing no comment from the public, can I get a motion that this public hearing be closed, the ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Under first reading ordinance is listed letters K through Q. Can I get a motion by consent that these ordinances be passed on first reading, published in the Home Review Tribune on October 13, 2017, with notice of public hearing to be held on October 24th, 2017 at 7 p.m.? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The resolutions before you this evening are listed 1 through 32. 1 through 32. Can I get a motion by consent to approve? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mitch. We will now go to the public session. I now ask that the public session, that you, any resident wishing to speak, go to the microphone. Please provide your name in the section of the township in which you reside. 
The public session allows five minutes. The five minute time frame includes remarks by speaker and any response or interaction by the council or administration. While this is a strict five minute time frame, the speaker will be allowed to complete a sentence if time runs out during the mid sentence. Otherwise, there will be no extensions for additional time. Uh, good evening, Council President, uh, Woodbridge Township uh, Administration, uh, Mr. Uh, Park, Hope uh, One. Is tonight is this working? Okay. Uh, is this in an executive session tonight? No, there is no executive session tonight. Okay. Good. Um, you hate to say this, but are we prepared? Do we have enough ammunition and stuff like that? I mean, this is crazy what's going on in this world. And uh, I was wondering, you know, can you give us a brief update? Are we covered and everything like that with, uh, you know, uh, the forces to uh, uh, protect ourselves over here in town? I would hope so. Don't, go, don't hope, man. I mean, just say yes or no. I would hope so. Um, don't say okay. uh, Another quick question here, too. Um, do we have any satellite phones in town for the key administration people? <coughs> satellite phones? No. No? It's about time, I think, that you guys uh, spend some of that pilot money and get at least, don't buy, at least about 12 of them and give it to key personnel in the uh, city because communication is paramount. And if the communications go out, like the cell phones and your repeaters and stuff like that, at least you'll have these satellite phones. You don't need more than 12 or 13 of them to uh, you know, give to the key personnel. So please consider that. All right? Should be much more to do that. Um, what else here? Okay. Um, why, why is the mayor in uh, uh, the Board of Education, uh, Dr. DeVega, why are they putting the kids in jeopardy in schools? What are you speaking about? What I'm speaking about is sending your police officers into these schools, right, and they don't have any body cams on them. Okay? You're putting them in a high profile, high incident um, area, right? And there is a need to document the situations as they arise, right? And as we know, things do happen in school, things do happen in the township, cops change reports and stuff like that. And my concern is that, you know, uh, if you have the incident happening, right? And when seconds count and when documentation count, you don't have nothing. You have the focus with you, right? If you had the body cams on the cops, right, you'd have it a, a visual documentation of what's going on. Do you understand me? No. No? I mean, how, how much more simple can uh, I mean, I think that our police force does a good job. I, do, I know the kids are protected in school as much as they can be protected. Well, good is good, is good, is good is not good enough. You have to go one step beyond in this world today. It's a crazy world. Yes, to, it is. You have to document visually, okay? And um, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to go back to the Board of Education. I was there, I brought this up before the Board of Education, right, at the Thursday meeting, that you do need the cameras. And it's foolhardy, it's very reckless to send these officers in there without these body cameras, okay? Um, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, uh, Selena Manor, uh, noise ordinance, stuff like that, did that apply to your Sure does. Okay, so who do they call at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning when the trucks are backing up and stuff like that, you know, picking up the guard? You gotta do something with backing warrants. Well, garbage trucks make noise, Mr. Chewbacca. Yeah, I know, but... Okay, I'm no matter what, you know, what, what the case may be, and garbage has to be picked up, it has to be picked up. Would you like that? And garbage doesn't start till 5 a.m., am I correct, Mr. Henry? It starts at 5 a.m., they're not garbage trucks that are out there at 3 in the morning. And if they are, right, then, then, then call the police, let them know. Let's monitor this, then, if you know, if you got somebody out there with a microphone and stuff like that taking pictures, you know, you're probably going to know who it is, right? Uh, on here and uh, the staff and stuff like that for the parking right of the Delina Manor make sure you find out you know where they're going to be parking the approval placard on your thing you don't have enough spaces up there on there uh, let's see what else we got here oh yeah the opioid thing um 24 deaths in the town or what so far you sure uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure does the mayor know you're making up numbers, Mr. Tabaka. You're making up numbers. Well, let's set it straight here right now, Mr. Mayor. How much? I don't know. You don't know. You're the mayor. You're making it up. I'm making it up. Come on, 
happens to marry you. You're throwing a number out there and I'm trying to get a response. I'm not giving you a response. You're making up a number. You're going to make the response. It has never been that high any year recently. It never that high right. any year recently. It was 14 last year. You're making up a number. Making up a number. Yes. All right, give me the right number. I don't know the right number. You're the mayor and you don't know how many. Could you find out next week? No. Why not? I don't want to. You don't want to. I don't need to know it. You don't need, you're the any, mayor. Any death is too much, Mr. Trevaca. Any death is too many. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Trevaca. Right. Ann Kozar, C1 property owner. Since July 11, I've been trying to reestablish a free zoning board appeal venue for Woodbridge residents. I know if I were on the council and a resident told me they paid over $20,000 to get two incorrect local zoning board decisions overturned in Superior Court, I'd look into the matter to see what was wrong there. No resident should have to go to Superior Court to get the relief our local zoning board should be giving them for free. On August 8th, I asked Mr. Delina who specifically made Superior Court a resident's only appeal option. He said he didn't recall. Actually, the council made the decision. Mr. Delina was on the council at the time and voted for the Superior Court option. At September 5th council meeting, Mr. Delina asked Mr. Kaufman to explain why the free zoning board, zoning board appeal venue was rescinded. He basically stated a more efficient and effective way to handle these cares was needed. I chose to speak with Mr. Coughlin after the meeting since I wanted to finish my prepared comments and Mr. Coughlin's explanation counted towards the meager five minutes a resident is allowed to speak to the council. Mr. Coughlin thought I wanted the council designated to hear zoning board appeals again. However, I was clear in my July 25th remarks this wasn't my intent. The council did it at one time. They weren't effective. And as Mr. Coughlin said, we need a more effective and efficient way to do it. It's the council who has the authority to amend the current Superior Court option and replace it with the free local appeal venue and I feel that's exactly what they should do. When I initially asked the council members if any of them would be opposed to a free local appeal venue, Mr. Delina spoke on their behalf. He said the topic was discussed, but quote, it would not be considered at this time. Naturally, I assumed he spoke with all the council members and it was the council members who made the decision. Only upon asking for a vote tally did I find out Mr. Delina spoke only with attorney Coughlin and Vice Chair Meehan, and these were the three people and not the council members who decided not to pursue a free local appeal venue. Mr. Delina's response to me was misleading at best. After Mr. Delina acknowledged he talked only with Mr. Coughlin and Vice Chair Meehan, Mr. Anderson interjected the following comments, and I'd like to quote him. This is a quote. Of course, that wasn't the way it was because this was not something that was brought to us by the administration or to the people. You, he was referring to me, brought this as a question. That was it, it was purely a question. We don't have to discuss your questions later on. There was a discussion between our council president, the council vice president, and our attorney. But when you come in and say we didn't, you don't set our agenda, we set our agenda, unquote. My only agenda has always been to reinstate the free local zoning board appeal venue that Woodbridge residents used to have and deserve to have again. I asked the council members a legitimate question, and I don't feel Mr. Delina should have stopped them from answering it. Personally, I don't think Mr. Anderson's comments to me were deserved or appropriate. However, I'll leave it up to the people who attended the seven September 5th meeting and those who watch it on TV 35 to, to decide that for themselves. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments from the public? John, I'll start with Dr. Lubitsch again. 
the construction on the community center, I believe they put a big sign over there. Uh, how does one take to finish it? Uh, the other day, all the soil that's covered over there, is that going to the soil? There, from Mr. Zlandowski. About the sign over at the community center. Well, I can't comment on how long it's going to take to finish whatever it takes, it takes. I know the soil's not contaminated. What's the question? Is it contaminated soil? Yes. It's not contaminated. Not contaminated soil. No, it's not contaminated, and he doesn't have a date on when the sign will be finished. Uh, I know we do a lot of uh, work with the other towns of snow, snow, and garbage pickups. We don't do snow uh, removal for other towns, do we? No, like no nor do we do garbage pickup. Well, years ago, you got a red, you put down for it. Years ago, many, many years ago. Okay. Now, uh, do we have any work on the private properties? No. You don't do any work on the private properties. Yeah, how come it's private? We, we, only in, in extenuating circumstances we could under contracts with those entities. So you do work on a Sure it depends on what you need by private entities. We pay the Avenel VFW's parking lot in exchange for parking spaces when we need them for overflow for Belton Park. We do those kind of things always for the nonprofit entities in our town who do such a great job serving the residents of our town. And if we can help them out by, by doing something for them cheaper than they can get on the outside, then we do it uh, with a contract approved by the council. But by just a charge? Yes. Well, or, no, we charge them or we exchange it for something else. Like what? I just explained what. I mean, what what could I actually give to pay my parking lot? Go fix my parking lot. What could I give? We could not. We would not pay your parking lot, sir. You would not pay my parking lot. No. Uh, last Friday, I believe you pitched a hole across the street in Peter's uh, place over here. Yes, in exchange for yeah. them agreeing that we can use their parking lot for uh, overflow parking when the court is busiest, which is in the mornings between 8:30 and 11:30. So that and they're typically not busy. The only place really open then is the bagel place, and they don't use the whole place. So they allow our patrons to park there and not be towed because we don't have enough parking. We didn't have enough parking here. Right. So we get some, we're giving something, and we're getting something. That's great. I, I do agree because there was a lot of complaints in previous years. People would park on the street and throw it away or get a ticket. So this is so, I think, it's a great idea. So I'm coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, we will now go to the agenda session of the meeting. And let me just pull up my agenda. Basically, my agenda is in order. Um, Halloween's coming up, and the Ford's business community will be doing a trick-or-treat on New Brunswick Avenue, and that will be on Tuesday, October 31st, from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. It's for a fun and safe evening of trick-or-treating and you look for scarecrows up and down on New Brunswick Avenue at participating stores. And um, the stores will all be participating in trick-or-treating and there will also be prizes awarded for the uh, most scariest scarecrows in the business. So please go out and support this good cause and that's on October 31st, Tuesday from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. It's the first one so I encourage all the residents please come by and Take a walk down New Brunswick Avenue and support the local businesses on this special trick-or-treat Halloween day. And that's all I have. I will now go to Council Vice President Meehan. Thank you. I just have, uh, my agenda is in order. I just a reminder that this, this Sunday down Inman Avenue, we're going to do our first breast cancer walk, um, memory people that are fighting, uh, people that have lost their battle, people that are fighting, and people that are survivors. And it's really important. There's so many people that are afflicted with this disease. So we invite everybody to come out and put on their pink and walk down the avenue with us. Um, we'll be assembling at School 21 at 12 o'clock. 
it will take the uh, walk will take off at 12:30, where we'll go down to Colonial Fire Department. There we'll be holding a spaghetti dinner, a charity spaghetti dinner for a mom in Colonia who is battling breast cancer. It's $20 for the walk and the dinner, $10 if you just want to do the dinner, or $8 for um, children and uh, senior citizens. So we ask you, it's, it's important, especially this month, with uh, breast cancer awareness. And Mr. Henry, I just want to thank you for your quick response for the Colonia Little Fellows. And some issues down there with branches and things that could be dangerous to the children and public works got down there right away. So thank you for that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Um, moving down to item number six on um, police community relations. This Thursday, October 12th, Woodbridge Police Department will be hosting the annual Blue Mass at St. <coughs> Francis Cathedral in Metuchen at 10 a.m. On Saturday, October 14th, Detective Sino and Slosberg will be escorting a silent march on Oak Tree Road for the Manabi Group to bring awareness to domestic violence against women. Next week, Starting on Monday, October 16th, Violence Awareness Week starts, and Detective Sino and Slosberg will be at various schools in our district to talk about anti-violence, bullying, and internet safety. On Tuesday, October 17th, they will be at Colonia High School for their police interaction class. And on Tuesday, October 24th, Detective Sino and Slosberg will be at the Forts Firehouse for a neighborhood watch meeting. Moving down to item number nine. I'm very happy to say that we had a very successful um, Hispanic Heritage Festival here in Woodbridge last Sunday. I would like to thank our mayor, the administration, for all their support, Director Henry and the Department of Public Works, especially Billy, Steve, and Mike. They were there all day, and we um, did a donation drive for the hurricane relief in Puerto Rico, and they drove everything to Perth Amboy, so I especially want to thank Billy, Steve, and Mike. Director Simaluka and the Recreation Department, Brian Molnar, Rosemary Mendy, Eileen, our Woodbridge Police Department who had a table there. Thank you so much for all your support these last few years and for always being there. And I'm very humbled by our Woodbridge Township residents who responded to our call for donations for the hurricane relief for Puerto Rico. Um, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I, this has been a devastating disaster and it's affected me personally because I was born in Puerto Rico and my family's there. So again, I'm truly humbled by all of the Woodbridge Township residents that donated and that for their willingness just to help our fellow Americans. Thank you so much. And my last announcement, the Barron Arts Center, this Saturday, October 14th, they will host their 10th annual Barron Fest. It will take place at Parker Press from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Join them for an afternoon of art and music courtesy of local artisans. And that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Before I go to Councilman Spiller, I just wanted to announce, it's a little early, but it'll be here before we know it, uh, the Veterans Day Parade, which will be on Sunday, November the 12th, starting at 1.30 by the Ross Street School and going on to St. George Avenue down Main Street of Woodbridge to Town Hall. So I ask everybody please to come out and support our Veterans Day Parade on Sunday, November 12th at 1.30. Thank you. Councilman Spiller. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council President. Uh, item number one, Port Reading Day is this Saturday, 10 to 1. Uh, I'm located at Turner Street at School 9. Um, I'd like Councilman Small to discuss the details on this event under his agenda um, since he's a councilman from Port Reading and the school is basically in his backyard. So item number four, the Golden Saints asked me to announce they'll be having their annual Haunted Hayride on Saturday, October 21st, beginning at 5. That is located at the Saints Complex in Port Reading. Uh, it's always a fun and spooky night. They incorporate the uh, surrounding areas. It's, it's a good time, so if you get the opportunity, please check them out. Um, item number nine, it's Fire Prevention Week. And this Saturday, the Avenel Fire Department will be hosting their annual open house at the firehouse from 10 to 1. Uh, this year's theme is Every Second Count, it's planned two ways out. Um, you can see, bring the kids, bring your gang, grandkids. We have uh, Sparky, uh, Smoke Trailer, the ambulance will be there, other emergency services. I have a 30-foot fire truck slide that you go down. The kids enjoy that. So, uh, again, that's this Saturday at the Avenel Fire Department for their annual open house. The rest of my agenda is in order. Just one announcement. I'd like to alert the residents that there's a new crosswalk located at Avenel Street and Minna Avenue. Uh, there are also two new crosswalks installed on Port Reading <coughs> Avenue in the area of Daniel Street. Uh, this will further assist the safety of our residents uh, that frequent the business portion uh, of Avenel Street and Port Reading Avenue. And I'd like to uh, 
um, show my sincere gratitude and thanks to the administration and Director Hubner. Uh, I had a, a meeting with about 20 residents uh, on Avenel Street in the area of Minna, and they uh, brought several areas of concern regarding uh, some of the intersections. So we sent traffic, uh, traffic maintenance out, and they saw some of the things that they were talking about. Um, We've added the crosswalk, we added do not block, uh, some more areas of no parking and make the line of sight uh, easier for our motorists. So thank you very much, appreciate it. That's all. Thank you. Councilman Small. Thank you, Mr. President. The agenda's in order this evening. I'll just follow up uh, on Councilman Spiller's announcement, Port Reading Day, uh, 12 to one, uh, 12 to three rather, out this Saturday at School Nine. It gives us an opportunity to uh, award the Lifetime Achievement Award to a Port Reading resident who has gone above and beyond. This year's recipient is Mr. Gary Suffin, who has been involved over 50 years, uh, dedicating his time to uh, Saints, uh, Woodbridge Little League, Port Reading Fire Department, St. Anthony's Church, and now to Port Reading Sea Warren uh, Seniors. Uh, a great man and uh, very well deserved. There'll also be uh, a couple of awards for some firemen and first aiders. There's food, rides, games, great day. Please come out. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Councilwoman De Jesus on uh, Spanish Heritage Day. It, uh, it, it was a great success. I know you put a lot into it. The donations were incredible. So uh, good job. And to Director Hubner, our problem on uh, Portland Avenue between 4th and 5th is resolved. I appreciate that. Uh, a lot of phone calls for one car, but uh, it's done. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Councilman Patel. Yeah, thank you, Council President. Uh, <clears throat> my agenda is in order, but I would like to have uh, some uh, announcement. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank, uh, you know, Mayor, or Mayor Administration and the Public Works. I think we had, like, many streets were, like, reconstructed, I mean, resurfaced, and there are many street corners also re reconstructed. You know, they look really good, so thank you for that. Uh, also, next week in the Hindu faith, we have like a big celebrations coming up. It's on October 19th. There is going to be a Diwali. It's a festival of lights, uh, decorations, sweets, and prayers and blessings. And also on October 28th, it's going to be a new year for Hindu tra tradition because they also follow lunar calendar. So it's going to be 2074, like a new, new year. Uh, I would like to wish everyone a happy Diwali, happy, healthy, and very prosperous New Year to everyone. And uh, I have also one advisory that on like next weekend, and especially maybe on 19th and 20th, on the Oak Tree Road, you know, in like Islin area, I think you might see some more traffic, but it shouldn't be a big problem, you know. And also, I would like to. <clears throat> request all those shoppers in the area to just, you know, like uh, respect the permit parking because around those, you know, central business district, we do have permit parking. So please make sure that you respect those uh, permit parking. There is ample parking in the church. Thank you. Thank you, Council Thank you. Mr. Mitch. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my agenda is in order. I'll probably be noting 2A and adding what will be a new 2A or 2B. So just Keep an eye out for that. That's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. We'll now go to administration. Mr. Landolfi. Uh, thank you, Council President. I have several items uh, on my agenda tonight, but uh, really uh, there's not a lot here. We're going to have several awarded bids uh, that we're going to request. Uh, one for granted advisory services, uh, one for on-call uh, plumbing services. Um, we have it listed as fencing equipment. That's, uh, that's a misprint. I apologize for that. That should be playground equipment, pool maintenance swimming pool maintenance and uh, swimming pool repair. We're also gonna ask you to reject a, a bid for the methane panel at the community center. We're going back out on uh, rebid for that uh, that item. Uh, several uh, housekeeping items, uh, tax court appeal judgments, refunding tax overpayment, a sore overpayment, cancellation of a tax certificate, a parking refund, a ca uh, cancellation uh, of property taxes. And that's all we have, uh, that's all I have, Council President. Thank you, and now go to police department. Thank you, Council President. I have a number of items. Uh, addition of the traffic signal on Avenel Street at Station Drive. Uh, the deletion and removal of a stop sign on Wolf Place in Avenel. Um, addition of no parking zones on Avenel Street near Wolf Place. Uh, Fulton Street off of Main Street. Port Reading Avenue near East Fifth Avenue. Uh, deletion of the time restriction parking on 
uh, an area of Avenel Street between Manhattan and East Pennsylvania Avenue and making that area no parking at any time. Uh, delete parking restrictions on a portion of Vine Street and making Woodbridge Center Drive 25 mile an hour zone during the construction that's taking place or will be taking place. Uh, also regulating parking and vehicle movement in municipal parking lots and the creation of an entrance only and exit only on a driveway at 119 West Pond Road and making the exit driveway a right turn only. Uh, we're deleting a handicapped space on New Street in Woodbridge, a change in the uh, placard number for a space on Decker Place and the addition of handicapped spaces on Warden Avenue, Caroline Street, Pike View Lane, and Ridgedale <coughs> Avenue in Woodbridge. Thank you. Thank you. Now go to Health Party, Mr. Green. I don't have anything tonight. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. We'll go recreation, Mr. Maluka. Thank you, Council President. I have one item tonight, purchase of cameras for the Cypress Rec Center. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll planning and development, Ms. Lesky. Thank you, Council President. Just uh, acceptance of a site trial. Easement. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works, Mr. Andrews. Thank you, Council President. I just have two bond releases tonight. Thank you. 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 Thank you.